Live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. And UTAS staff and students will complete the transition to a new $97 million Launceston facility, the Shed, by the end of the year. The opposition spruiking, it's a perfect example of what could be achieved in Hobart if UTAS is to complete its transition into the CBD. A first look inside the new UTAS campus in Inveresk, a centre for STEM studies including nursing and health sciences. Known as The Shed, Labor says it's an example of what could be for Hobart. We've seen the success of uh, new facilities in Burnie and now the, the incredible facilities that are being constructed here in Launceston and all of that can be completed with the construction of new facilities within the Hobart CBD. Those expected to study here providing a future boost for health services and also the local economy. The UTAS relocation to Inveresk is bringing around 4,000 students from the Newnham campus into the city and surrounds, which is really terrific for our, our local businesses. More people, more opportunities, and not only that, but world-leading and industry-leading opportunities to bring in sectors of people that would have been looking to, to other areas. The government repeating that it won't stand in the way of UTAS's continued move into Hobart's CBD. Today it was focusing on health, hailing its nearly 500 new recruits to bolster frontline services since April, including 44 doctors and 25 nurses for Royal Hobart Hospital's emergency department. Department. We know there are pressures on our emergency department. We know there are pressures in the health system. This is happening all around Australia. The hospital says the government's 88 million ED recruitment drive has allowed it to fill staffing gaps that have plagued it since COVID. And it's allowed us to deliver care more timely manner to the Tasmanian public. Melinda Ogden, 7 Tasmania News. A new sustainably built wellness hub is hoping to place a bigger focus on the health and well-being of Tasmanians. The Launceston facility providing access to nutrition, exercise and dental programs. Tasmanian timber forming a strong foundation for an environmentally sustainable space, hoping to boost the health and well-being of its occupants. The space itself is here to create some excitement and some community get-together. You know, well, we want people to build connections. The multi-storey building boasting several clean and green elements, such as solar panels, nature strips and carbon neutral timber beams. So we're really proud of that. Um, and we have benchmarked against other buildings and this is probably one of the best in Australia. The green space offering Tasmanians of all ages access to health and wellbeing care under one roof, including dental services, yoga studios, playgrounds and a cafe. To help Tasmanians um, come up with a better journey when it comes to their health and wellbeing. Rebecca Gadineris, 7 Tasmania News. Frustrated police are pleading with Tasmanians to slow down after nabbing almost a dozen speedsters in a single operation. It comes as a state's road toll climbs to 16 following a deadly weekend. The mangled wreck of a ute in one of Hobart's busiest intersections, the aftermath of a split second on the road, killing a young man and seriously injuring three others yesterday morning. One of two weekend tragedies. Unfortunately this weekend we did see three people die on our roads in Tasmania and that's never okay. We've got to drive towards the conditions. The weekend as well was quite heavy fog and bad weather. So slow down, put your headlights on and check your vehicles in good working order. The horror two days coinciding with a weekend crackdown on speed. Every year on Tasmanian roads there are about 300 crashes uh, that result in death or serious injury. Speed is a major contributor to those. Uh, the faster you go, the worse the crash. But some aren't getting the message. In just two hours yesterday, police catching 11 people speeding along this stretch of the West Tamer Highway, some exceeding the limit by more than 27 kilometres an hour. There is no excuse for speeding. I mean, you're judging between being late for something potentially or not getting there at all. So slow down, be a few minutes late to your destination, but be there alive. Nick Kelly, 7 Tasmania News. In a New Year's Eve coup, Launceston's Beer Fest has secured electro-pop duo Sneaky Sound System to headline the annual event.
As well as music, Beer Fest offers a jam-packed program which includes comedy performances, fireworks and the nationally acclaimed Beer Olympics. Well, Tasmania, along with the rest of the country, will fall short of meeting bold housing targets, according to an independent forecast of the construction industry. After a slowdown, the race to boost residential supply will attempt to ramp up by the end of the decade, as Rebecca Gaitaneris reports. Australian governments are making moves to ramp up housing supplies to cope with growing population, but we're not going to realise the benefits for another few years. That's according to Oxford Economics Building in Australia report. It predicts we're facing a shortage of 146,000 dwellings across the country, forecast to grow to 164,000 by 2027. National Cabinet set a target of 1.2 million new homes over the next five years. Its forecast will fall short, more likely to achieve 940,000, one-fifth below target. The Tasmanian government set the goal of 10,000 dwellings for social housing by the end of 2032. That requires at least 2,000 homes to be built in the next three years. Tasmania is expected to see a total of over 2,500 dwellings built in 2024, with the potential of easing borrowing costs next year, boosting hopes of a local building upturn. After slowdown, the industry is expected to gain momentum from 2026. Total national construction is expected to hit record levels by the end of the decade. Rebecca Gaydoneris, 7, Tasmania News. Former Australian cricket captain Tim Payne has a new job and there are no kookaburras in sight. Joining the Tasmanian Jack Jumpers as their new director of high performance, the former wicketkeeper says he's always been a supporter of the team and shares a strong bond with coach Scott Roth. Payne will officially take up his duties on Friday. Tassie's Jed Beaton is still in the Pro Motocross Championship chase despite being pipped in the final laps of race one at Toowoomba. The boy in blue held a convincing lead for most of the event before ladder leader Kyle Webster struck in the dying moments. Beaton will have to know. He needs to pick it up right now. This is where Webster was quick last time. Massive jump onto the start line. Beaton did manage line honours and a change of leathers in the second race, helping secure a round victory and crucial championship points. With two rounds to go, he trails Webster by just seven points. Meanwhile, quad bike racing returned to the Turk Enduro Series for the first time in seven years at Baker's Beach over the weekend. Northwest brothers Troy and Clint Sheridan finishing first and second, beating interstate rider Cooper Van Vliet third. Local Jonty Rinders winning the seniors. The Devonport Strikers continue to hold their top spot in the McDonald's Women's Super League after a convincing 4-0 win against the King Reliance in round 14, pulling through without key player Maddie Payne, who's benched with an injury. She's going to be out for at least another couple of weeks, um, which is a shame because she's just come into some really good form as well. The Glenorchy Knights also securing a 2-0 win over Taruna. And that's tonight in sport, Kim. OK, thank you, Nick. Well, Peter Murphy will join us after the break with the weather forecast. Good evening Hobart, 17 degrees today, Launceston, Devonport and Burnie all reached a high of 15. Bushy Park was our top, 18 degrees, Bushy Park also recording our overnight low of zero. Temperatures sat between 2 and 5 above average today. Grove 17 degrees, Smithton, St Helens 16, Strawn and King Island 15, Flinders Island and Low Head 14 degrees. Cloud did move through from the west today, most of the recent rain over the west and north to 9am, 63 millimetres at Mount Barrow, since then not much to report. There is a band of cloud pushing towards us from southern Western Australia. High cloud moved over Victoria and just some scattered cloud over New South Wales completes that picture. Tomorrow the high moves off the New South Wales coast allowing the cold front to track further towards us. Northwesterly winds 20 to 30 knots then uh, getting up as uh, high as 35 knots over the south and west with swells to 5 metres. Gale warning has been issued for waters between South East Cape and Low Rocky Point. A strong wind warning for remaining waters apart from the Lower East Coast. And we have a minor flood warning that's been posted for the North Esk River. Hobart 17 for Tuesday and partly cloudy. A shower or two for Adventure Bay, 15 the top and 13 the high for Taralea with a shower or two. 15 for Launceston, a showery day, 15 for Devonport, showers easing, Bridport 15 as well. Burnie expecting a top of 14 with a shower or two, 15 for Strawn, Marawar 14 degrees. 
St Helens tomorrow, 15 with a shower, partly cloudy for Swansea, 16 the top and 15 for Whitemark, a windy day on Flinders Island. Looks like Wednesday will be the pick this week with fine, mostly sunny weather for the state. Showers back though with the arrival of the next cold front on Thursday. Less of a chance of showers on Friday, but some still around as the northwesterlies freshen. Showers easing from Perth, sunny and 18 in Adelaide, 17 the top for Melbourne, a sunny 20 degrees in Sydney and fine in Brisbane, 23 the top. Cloudy conditions at the moment, 15 in Hobart, 13 right now in Launceston and Devonport. Great to see you back in the chair, Kim. I hope you're well enough to uh, see out the whole week. <laughs> Only time will tell. Thank you, Merv. And that is all your news for now. We'll be back later with updates. Thanks for joining us. Good night.